Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Aimstone channel. Today is Monday, so we gotta get back to work as always. Let's go ahead and start this video with Bitcoin market. Here we have four hourly Bitcoin chart, and as of the time of this recording, Bitcoin is at around $69,600. Yes, Bitcoin has been going sideways in the past couple days since Bitcoin dropped from like $71,000, $72,000 to even below like $60,000. 8,500 bucks, it bounced back a bit, so here we are. We are more or less moving sideways. From a technical standpoint, you remember, guys, the triangle that I have been talking about for quite some time. Yes, indeed, BTC price action broke the resistance of that triangle. In fact, it was quite higher compared to that triangle, but that unfortunately it dropped. But look, <laughs> we're still higher than the triangle because obviously the triangle ended but it seems like now this time around we are forming another triangle much bigger one and this time this is a ascending triangle ascending triangle is way more bullish than uh, more or less symmetric ones so let's see what is going to happen this time around additionally in this four hourly bitcoin chart uh, we have 100 days simple moon average which acts more or less as a support Yes, it seems like uh, BTC uh, has been supported uh, in the past couple of days, about 100 days in May. So I guess that's another positive sign. But let's zoom out even further to this one monthly Bitcoin chart because I found some interesting patterns. Yes, it seems like BTC tends to go in cycles. We have massive bull market followed by bear market 80 to 85 percent drawdown and the cycle repeats but for example let's just take a look what happened in 2014 in 2014 btc has been in this uh, bear market where it dropped by roughly 85 percent but then when btc price action broke the resistance btc uh recovered a bit and then it skyrocketed However, between when BTC broke the resistance and Bitcoin having, it took 274 days. So yes, BTC recovered a bit and then after that point on, Bitcoin skyrocketed. And then 2018, something similar played out. BTC went into that bear market. Bitcoin dropped by 85% roughly. And um, once again, whenever BTC price action broke the resistance and between the resistance and the having, it took 396 days. <laughs> much longer this time than the previous one and then 2022 bear market bitcoin yes that was a vicious bear market i think bitcoin was down by 76 percent and uh, yes whenever btc price action broke the resistance between the break and the bitcoin having it took um 394 days so obviously um between the break and the having it uh, seems to be like a recovery phase but the real bull market begins after the bitcoin having and right now we are more than a month after the bitcoin having so <laughs> it should be quite hot in the past couple of months q3 q4 it should be quite interesting so let's see yes indeed guys strap up your seats because it's about to get wild we are at the hottest phase of the bull market cycle so get ready bitcoin fear grid index today we are 72 win grid obviously we are lower than we were back a couple of days ago we were like what like 76 77 yes it does make sense because the btc dropped a bit so if it did this is actually another person to stack more sets so we're still down by well like four thousand dollars from all-time high so yes guys this is your chance Moving on, just in, Canadian public company DeFi Technologies has adopted Bitcoin as its primary treasury reserve asset. They bought 110 BTC. Yes, 110 Bitcoin, it's not a lot, but this is definitely a step forward. Adoption does not sleep indeed. Moving on. Breaking, Paraguay to sell access hydro energy to Bitcoin miners as a part of its new economic development strategy paraguay's itipu hydropower station is one of the world's biggest yet only 20 percent of the generated power is used 
20% is not a lot at all. So yes, if they sell access energy to Bitcoin miners, that would be great. We're going to have more competition among Bitcoin mining. And obviously, this is a good thing. Let's move on. Just in, BlackRock and Fidelity have increased their spot Bitcoin TF holdings to a combined total of 478,000 Bitcoin worth $33 billion. Yes, 478,000 Bitcoin. Um, that would be what more than 2.5% of all Bitcoin that will ever exist. <laughs> yes, and uh, since Bitcoin Spot TF approved, it has been well, like six months. So just imagine what is going to happen in the next like three, four years. Maybe they will accumulate like 20% of all Bitcoin in existence. It's a possibility, but demand is definitely there. Let me give you guys a quick update regarding Bitcoin spot ETF inflow outflow what happened as of Friday. I know today is Monday. Obviously, today's data has not been released yet. It's going to be released tomorrow. But as of Friday, BlackRock accumulated $178 million worth of Bitcoin. Fidelity, nothing. Bitwise, they sold actually 7.9 mil. And ARK bought 6.9 million and additionally grayscale sold 36 million dollars that would be the second negative day for grayscale but despite that we have a net flow of 131 million dollars and obviously it is increasing since um 886 million dollars worth of inflow which took place earlier last week but look, let's see what is going to happen this week. So therefore, BlackRock accumulated $17.6 billion worth of Bitcoin. Fidelity approaches to $10 billion. Um, Bitwise, $2 billion. ARK, $2.6 billion. And Grayscale sold almost $18 billion. And therefore, the cumulative net flow would be $15.6 billion. Bucks. Once again, let's see what this week is going to bring us. That being said, Bitcoin... ETF had inflow for 19 days in a row and accumulated more than $14.17 billion. So yes, hopefully that um, positive streak will continue into this week. Let's see. Moving on. Bitcoin ETF sucked up two months of Bitcoin mining supply in the first week of June. Let's take a look. Spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds in the United States acquired the equivalent of the around two months of the worth of cryptocurrencies mining supply in the first week of June. With the inflow of approximately $1.8 billion, the 11th ETF bought 25,000 Bitcoin in the uh, trading week between June 3 and 7, around eight times more than 3,150 Bitcoin has been mined over the same time, according to the data from Huddle15 Capital. <laughs> the demand can you guys imagine what it means it means that demand is eight times higher than the supply so yes if uh, such a um, ratio is going to persist into the future you bet believe bitcoin will be above six figures in no time that is obviously very bullish news all right guys let's move on take a look at some interesting bitcoin charts obviously this first chart that we have btc price action we have a low removing average, upper removing average, and then we have all time highs. And look at this. Yes, right now BTC not too long ago broke the previous all time high, which was sixty nine thousand dollars. Now it have been wiggling between like sixty eight or like seventy three thousand dollars for the past like couple of weeks, but it is just being consolidated sideways. And the next leg up is just around the corner. It, that's exactly what happened in the previous times. Whenever BTC price action tends to break the previous all-time high, yes, it might stumble a bit and then it will skyrocket. That's exactly what happened in 2017. <laughs> in 2021, BTC price action literally went through it. It did not even stumble. It just literally was making one high after another. So let's see what is going to happen this time. Another interesting chart, it represents cycle bottoms to cycle tops. Right now we are in this white color. Yes, the bottom was for like $16,000. Right now we are at $69,000. So, and the real bull market has not even started yet. Look, <laughs> just imagine what happens in the like latest phases of this bull market. 
Yes, the history speaks for itself. 2017 and 2021 were a massive rallies. So let's see what is going to happen this time. And lastly, let's take a look at this quick video where Raul Paul will give his strategy for this upcoming bull market. Let's take a look. Let's jump straight in because 2024 and the crypto markets has been on an absolute tear. We have seen in the month of May alone, 420 billion US dollars added to the crypto market cap. We have seen ETF frenzies, we have seen meme coin mania and the Bitcoin halving just to name a few. We're not even halfway through the year yet. I'm so curious when it comes to your strategy so far this year and also your all-star play of the year so far. Arthur, let's start with you. What have we got? Strategy, be long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't sell, <laughs> don't get shook. Don't use too much leverage. Uh, I mean, it's pretty simple. Like everyone knows what they should be doing. Obviously we all never do it because it's, you know, fun to YOLO some bullshit. But at the end of the day, it's very, very simple. If you believe that central banks and governments are in debt, will continue to be in debt, will continue to print money, will continue to hand out, you know, welfare to buy votes or support from the population at large, then crypto is the answer. Um, obviously, Bitcoin's the OG thing, and that's, I, I own a lot of Bitcoin. And then as you move up the risk curve, uh, and hopefully up the return, uh, potential return curve as well, then you get into the, the shitcoin space. Well, I'm curious to hear from you. Best play of 2024, and how have you played this year? To do absolutely nothing has been the best <laughs> play of all. And my view is this space goes from two and a half, three trillion now. By the end of the cycle, it's 10 to 15 trillion. By the end of, let's say, 2032, just extrapolating the normal log trend of this, it's $100 trillion by 2032. That from here is $97 trillion of wealth that is going to come. This is the largest, fastest accumulation of wealth in all recorded history. Let's assume I'm a total moron, which is a good thing to do, and I'm wrong by 50%. It's still a $50 trillion wealth accumulation. That is the entire history of wealth accumulation of the S&P 500 and its market cap. So the amount of wealth that's going to get generated is going to get recycled into the space. People will buy high-end property in nice places. But a lot of people in this space won't go outside of this space and it gets recycled, whether it's VC, whether it's the opportunities of building the applications layer, but really people seek trophy assets. And so I've just been buying as much trophy assets as I can for a kind of long 10 year time horizon, because I think this is the last chance you'll ever get to buy this stuff at the kind of prices it is. So as the rule Paul indicated, the best strategy <laughs> is to do nothing. And yes, I do agree with him on that. And he believes, uh, uh, the cycle top this time is going to be at around 15 to 20 trillion dollars in the cryptocurrency market cap right now a bitcoin market cap well, like 1.3 trillion crypto market cap like 2.6 trillion so that would mean that a uh, cryptocurrency market cap would overall increase by four to six x a bitcoin would increase by four to six x this time around it means that bitcoin would be in between well like 200 like fifty thousand dollars all the way to like i don't know like 350k something like that even further yes i think that is a decent outlook either way it would be quite nice let me know what do you guys think comment below subscribe and like this video